right, so thank you everyone for joining us. Um, as you know, today we're here to talk about the Southeast Maintenance Facility. I, I wanted to thank you, uh, all of those who joined virtually. We're very excited about this project as well as the people who joined in, in physical format. Moving forward, we will be having more of these as a hybrid uh, solution. So those of you who want to join us physically, you're more than welcome to. And we, we provide you the best quality drinking water, ice cold for your, for your pleasure as you as you see the presentation. Um, today's presentation is relatively short. It's a, it's a pretty uh, straightforward project. So I'll give you a little bit of the background and then Lee Gurao is going to go over some of the project schedule, uh, project details. Um, so this, the, the something maintenance facility, the reason we're doing this project is there is a big need in the southern portion of our county to, to have a maintenance and operations facility for both our water and our wastewater team. Um, so th this facility is intended to meet that need. It is on the order of $50 million construction cost, and we're looking for the best team of architects and engineers to help us um, design and, and build the facility. So the project is cited on what is currently apparent, uh, approximately a 17 um, acre parcel. That parcel will be subdivided. So the facility will actually be on a parcel that's approximately 14 acres in, in size. Um, three, three and change acres will be an ISD facility that's being constructed separately, um, but will require coordination with our facility. Uh, as you can see there, that's the site plan on the top left corner. And on the on the top right corner is um is is the the a preliminary conceptual design of the facility, including the parking garage as well as the maintenance facility for operations and maintenance staff. Um, I'm going to hand the a microphone to Lee Burrell, who is our SPM over the project. She's going to walk you briefly through the scope of the project, um, and discuss the the particular needs of the project, such as uh, our implementing orders that require sustainable and LEED certified buildings, and then she'll discuss our technical certifications um, that are required, and we'll open it up for questions and comments on the scope we provided uh, a week ago for, for the folks who are on this call. Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. Uh, so the scope of work uh, for this project is on the slide. I'm just going to read through. Uh, then uh, we're we'll happy to answer question. We'll be happy to answer question afterwards. Uh, it's a it's a all engineering services for approximately 126,000 square feet of WASI maintenance facility. Uh, the building is two-story structure that will include warehousing space, repair shops, and an administrative office, and a three-story parking structure. The uh, the work also include a complete site development. That includes the site lighting, landscaping, and the irrigation, and the proposed facility extended parking. Uh, the scope also include implementing order A-8 sustainability sustainable buildings program and the comply with the county's new sea level rights strategy. Prior to start the design, uh, the selected consultant will be will, will, will be required to perform a feasibility analysis to deter determine the appropriate level of lead certification for the facility. Uh, the county has a uh, sustainability uh, sustainable building program. I think the minimum is a silver, but uh, we want consultant to do a study to determine what is the property level. That means a silver, a silver level may not be applied to this uh, before the, uh, the study. This analysis will produce a final determination on the level of lead certification for the building. And the service also include assistance during the permitting and the procurement processes, the phases, and also engineering services during the construction, including periodic site inspections, attendance at the meetings, review shop drawings, respond to information requests, review claims and the potential change orders, review as-built drawings, and 
certification of the project. That's the scope. The technical certification requirement for this project uh, is listed here. Uh, when we say prime, uh, that's prime only, that's only prime. So for this project, the prime must have 14.00 architecture and 18.00 architecture construction management. The percentage is uh, there at the, uh, in the minimum percentage. The rest of the prime or sub or both combination, the, this um, certification you can see is the purpose is to really open this project to more firms that are qualified for this combination. So it's a 10.05 for environmental engineering, 11.00 uh, general structural engineering, 12.00 general mechanical engineering, 13.00 general electrical engineering, 15.01 surveyor and the mapping, 16.00 general civil engineering, 20.00 landscape architecture. Uh, that's, I think, the requirement for the TC. So one, one of the things that I wanted to add, um, of course, this a solicitation will have the small business requirements. I mean, I'm sure that those of you who have been in business with us are familiar with the typical percentages, somewhere at least you know 15, 20 percent. We we don't have those uh, formal percentages designated because we're going to pass it through SPD um, one more time. But once once we do have a formal designation, you'll see it in the solicitation. There will be a small business uh, portion to it. And you can probably imagine that you know this general civil engineering. Um, surveying and mapping, those are going to have high targets for the the small business requirements. Um, and then some of the other ones might have lesser targets for the small business requirements, depending on the type of report being done. Um, the other thing I, I did want to mention, just to clarify, the the lead analysis that needs to be done, it is it is to see if uh, we have to meet a minimum of silver. So the analysis is to see if silver is the appropriate level or if gold would be a cost effective option for us. Um, but it, it, we will meet a minimum of silver to to comply with our implementing orders um, within the county. So I wanted to make sure that was clear. And before we open up to questions, I want to take the opportunity. This is this is a unique uh, uh, meeting in the sense that we we don't often get the folks who are interested in architecture and development um, in the room. We do a lot of linear infrastructure jobs. So I wanted to show you, we did update our uh, development website in Miami Water and Sewer. We tried to make it more user friendly, provided what we thought was everything you all needed um, to, to, to do your business with us in terms of development. So since there's a, a lot of folks in here in the, in the development community, I wanted to make you all aware. Our communications team did an excellent job. And if you click on that QR code or, or scan it with your phone, you will be able to to uh, visit the website and we of course you know encourage you to give us your feedback and if you think there's anything missing we will definitely do our best to address it um but with that said i wanted to open up the floor for for questions you can of course submit your questions at the email you see before you um electronically or your, your comments and we will we will take those into account Similar to our previous uh, meeting, we will leave it open for two weeks time in case you want to digest it. You, you should have had this scope for about a week before we put this meeting together. Um, but we'll give you two weeks to send us in your questions and, and comments and then we'll cut it off and, and we'll wrap up the scope and, and send it downtown and put it out on the street. Um, but hopefully you guys all have something to, to share or, or comment uh, today while we're here. So, um, Valeria, I'll, I'll help you. I'll, I'll ask you to to lobby the questions for me. Do we have any? No, none. Any? Anyone here? Any any confusions about what? I did it. Any? Uh, does the group uh, understand the scope well? Okay. Is there any fueling component here? A fueling facility yeah. is what you're saying. Is there a fueling facility? We were going to do a fuel 
The feeling was, uh, yeah, in the project last time when we did the design a few years ago, but now this feeling facility will be designed and constructed by ISD. Okay. Could, we, uh, could you read it out for us? Oh, yeah. Can I see it? Can you put it on the screen? Yeah. Here we go. Um, which one of them is it? <coughs> What's that in the chat? His hand is raised. Ernesto. <laughs> You should be off mute now and listen. Okay. Good morning. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. The question I had is, is as part of this project, will it be any work on the right of way as part of this improvement? Water main, uh, sewers, and, and right of way outside the fence. Um, yes, because the, the facility will be connecting to a wooden sewer facility on the right of way from the property. Yes. So this is not part of, of this scope. This is a set. This will be a separate project. No, no, it wouldn't. It, it would be included in the scope of this. So I imagine this would be handled. And I'm, I'm very new to the country. So we're building our own facility. Does the A and E firm have to go through the donations process the way a private facility would? Or how would they handle it? Uh, from what we know, the site, there, there existing water line and the sewer line in the abutting uh, uh, right away. So this project is just connecting to water sewer line and the plant doesn't need to Right. So, so the existing yeah. infrastructure is sufficient for, for these such facilities. Okay. Right. You, all you're going to establish is the connection, but I guess I, I misspoke. Not only is it the, the new development process, I'm saying, do they have to go through the permitting? Yes. Okay. Yes. So they would do permitting as if they were a private developer. Correct. That's that's right. A, right. That's that's something I wasn't aware of myself. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to bring up to the group: the 126,000 uh, square feet is a, an approximate number that we built in a little bit of contingency of approximately 10 percent contingency. We ex we actually expect it to be 115,000 square feet. That was the previous design. So. Um, you know, that, that's for the benefit of the group. We wanted to give us some wiggle room. We didn't want whoever negotiated the task to to uh, require a change order if we needed to be a little bit flexible. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Other questions? Okay, there was no confusion with the scope. Everything was clear, cut and dry. It's building a, a maintenance facility. All right, well, if that's the case, uh, thank you all for joining very much. We're going to have another one of our industry forums in two weeks. And in that one, you're going to hear more programmatic um, approximately two weeks, sometime in mid June. Uh, we're, we're still in late May, but um, we're gonna, you're going to hear more programmatic. Um, Topics, things such as our CAP program, um, where we're going. We are we are working every day to put up a five-year work plan for contractors and for well, the consultant one was actually shared in our last industry forum. So that's how um, our our five-year work plan for PSAs. Um, but the the contractor version, where every job is out, um, similar to to FBOT, we want to make sure we share that. For the group so it, it's going to be exciting um and i hope you all join us it'll be hybrid like this one hopefully if, as long as we're allowed and you know covid permits um so thank you for joining us this morning i guess you can stop the recording now <laughs>